The year is 2023, and we're still making videos about these two guys pitting them against each other. Now, sure, it's been a while. Like, the first time we made this video was in 2018. I was in my senior year of high school. I remember making the thumbnail. In fact, the thumbnail of this video today is sort of an homage to the thumbnail that we made five years ago. But I will say, too, in that span of five years, we really saw one of these guys pull away from the other. But I feel like with the other players' significant improvements in this season's worth of play alone, the race has sort of rounded itself out again. And I think it's a more appropriate conversation to be having once more in 2023. We're going over onto the NHL's announcement for the Norris, because we had ourselves the nominees, the top three players that were voted on by the NHL people, and the ballot of names is pretty interesting. You have yourselves Eric Carlson of the San Jose Sharks. That's not a surprise. The guy was the top scorer amongst all defensemen. The guy got 100 points. He is the first 100-point defenseman in 30 years. He deserves props. He deserves to be there. He was phenomenal. And then you have yourselves two familiar names rounding out that selection. It's Adam Fox of the Rangers and Kale McCarr of the Avalanche. Now, the thing is, Kale McCarr only played 60 games this season, and a lot of Canucks fans went out there and said, wait a minute, why is McCarr here on the list? The guy missed out on literally a quarter of the games, and you have yourselves another player that maybe should have gotten some consideration for the voting instead in Quinn Hughes. Today, we are talking about Quinn versus Kale in an ever-long debate that has been raging on since 2018. Because, if you go over to these guys, and we talked about this back in 2018, both Quinn Hughes and Kale McCarr were, at the same time, NCAA defensemen who debuted together. You had Kale McCarr, who inevitably rounded himself out as a Hobie Baker winner, being better than Quinn. And when these guys made their debut in the NHL, they were both phenomenal players for their teams, it's just Kale McCarr won that Calder Trophy over Quinn Hughes, too. So, step after step, Kale has had a step up on Quinn, even last season. Kale McCarr was the best defenseman in the NHL. He won the Norris, so there you go. He's beaten out Quinn again. But this season, a lot of Canucks fans are starting to get a bit feisty, saying, hey, wait a minute, our guy had the second most points amongst all defensemen. He played on a bad team, and he had 69 assists. He had more assists than McCarr had points. And this is sort of where I wanted to come in and enter with my two cents over here. So Quinn Hughes is a player who, from last season up until this season, he improved tremendously. From two seasons ago up until this season, he improved exponentially. He is a much better player today than he has been before. And it's really come together to put the Canucks in such a good spot with this player that you kind of have to go out there and start questioning, okay, where is this guy going to go? Like, what is the ceiling here? Because so far, throughout his career, Quinn Hughes has been nothing short of spectacular and improving. Meanwhile, for Kale McCarr, you could say some of the same things. He improved. He has gotten better. He had 86 points last year, but this season, he was slowed down so much due to injury that you could very well say that the magnitude of games that he had ended up losing are enough of a factor to say that he should not have been considered for this award. And the reason I say that is because if you go over to the NHL's website and you look at the Norris Award, let's go over there and look this up. Norris, NHL, here you go, James Norris Memorial Trophy. This is the annual award given to the defense player who demonstrates throughout the season the greatest all-around ability in the position. Now, if you go by that, I mean, Eric Carlson might not have a chance to win it, but the guy got 100 points, so who really cares? Give him the award anyway. But the defense player who demonstrates throughout the season the greatest all-around ability. Now, throughout the season is the kicker here. And it's sort of the factor that I think holds McCarr back, in my personal opinion, of analyzing who should have gotten the award. Because we saw examples of this in the past, too. You remember the Calder Trophy Showcase in 2015-16? They have a similar wording on their trophy, too. The player that has the best rookie season. Not the best rookie player, but the best season amongst players who are rookies. That's why in 2016, Connor McDavid did not win the award over Artemi Panarin because McDavid missed half the year. Panarin, while he had similar, if not inferior, point-per-game numbers, he was playing on a line with Patrick Kane, and the Blackhawks were just pretty good, 
long story short, if you just compare season versus season, Panarin's was better than McDavid's, and it's why he won the award. This right here, if you take a look at Quinn versus Kale, if you compare season versus season and you don't acknowledge the player behind the season, I feel like Quinn Hughes' 76 points in 78 games played is more impressive than Kale McCarr's 66 points in 60 games. Not strictly because I'm a fan of Quinn Hughes and I'm biased, but because longevity plays a part in it as well. If you start to consider the teams, then hey, Kale McCarr's playing on a much better team. Quinn Hughes is finding passes and setting guys up on a bad Canucks team that wasn't able to make it into the playoffs. And so... All things considered, if you just take a look at the player profiles without looking at the names, I could definitely see an argument being made for Quinn. However, this is what Daniel Wagner went out there and said on his Twitter, Kale McCarr only played 60 games this season, but they were a darn fine 60 games. I had Quinn just ahead of McCarr on my ballot, but it's hard to quibble with McCarr as one of the three Norris finalists. You then had other tweets going out there kind of viral, like this one from DJ here. How is Kale McCarr named a Norris finalist and Hughes wasn't? People out in the East are clueless because they likely don't stay up for Canucks games. It's a total joke. And this is sort of where I feel the Norris has an extra element that we don't see with too many other awards. I feel like the Selkie also has this sort of reputation as well, where namesake and the reputation behind your name plays a little more into this conversation than it does into other things for like the heart or for the other ones that are just points and numbers based like the Richard or the Art Ross. The Norris has been weird the past few years because we've seen it even with like the Dowdies and the Carlsons of yesteryear that sometimes you don't really need to have the best season period. You just kind of have to play well enough and have your name out there enough for Norris voters to consider you. Same thing could be said about Adam Fox. I mean, the guy had fewer points and more games than Quinn Hughes this season, playing on a better team. 76 points for Quinn Hughes versus the 72 points in 82 games that Adam Fox had. Oh, but he got a few more goals and fewer assists. Okay, is the plus minus really going to be the kicker here? I mean, I get it. Adam Fox was a plus 28. Quinn Hughes was a plus 15. But like, that's really the only thing, statistically speaking, that Fox had over Hughes. So this is sort of what I'm trying to talk about, right? Reputation plays a part into it. Kale McCarr missing out on so many games, ending up on the list where Quinn Hughes and Josh Morrissey are absent from because these guys had a lot more points. Like, I don't know, dude. I feel like for Quinn, he's gonna win a Norris one day. It's just gonna be really difficult to do so whenever Kale McCarr is around. But the reason I'm still confident in Quinn is because the guy has been improving so much that it's a matter of time, dude. Like, he has such a talented profile. He walks the line like nobody's business. He controls the blue line like nobody's business. He has been defending in his own zone so much better. Like, it's nobody's business that... It's really difficult to foresee a career out of Quinn Hughes with the way that he's been playing, where he doesn't eventually get his name on one of these trophies. Even if he hasn't gotten nominated or been a part of the top three yet, I feel like he's right up in there. And if it were up to me, like, just talking about defensemen who had the best season, okay, Eric Carlson, number one, I'm putting him up there. I'm putting Quinn Hughes right in that same conversation, too. And then I'm thinking about somebody else. If you want to say Adam Fox, okay. But Josh Morrissey really does deserve to be there, too. We're not talking about... About just purely defensive defensemen because let's face it the Norris doesn't really ever go to somebody who is like that you kind of have to get points to get the Norris in the first place but I'm putting Quinn on my ballot sure McCarr was injured and that's definitely not going to take away from his caliber of a hockey talent but when you're talking about the Norris you're talking about the season you're not talking about the player per se it's the season that they had so you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what are your opinions about Quinn Hughes versus Kale McCarr in this context it's a lot different from the Quinn versus Kale conversation we had back in 2018 where I was in high school grade 12 graduating waiting for my I don't know, grad interviews or whatever it was, something like that. But either way, thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishashrosnayanine. And bye.